Next up is Tom Rigg from Barn, going to tell us a bit about the challenges that some alt-nets find when they're building out their networks. Whilst you're all busy voting, yeah. <laughs> you take this one? Yeah, yeah, sure. Cool, thank you. Hi, folks. So uh, I'm going to be talking about the physical side, actually putting network in the ground and a lot of the challenges that we face when we're doing it. Um, I note that we're about 10 minutes ahead. Does that mean I can talk 10 minutes longer? <laughs> no, fair enough. Um, I'm just going to leave that up there just for a minute. Shameless plug. Uh, that was last week. And we got the uh, ISPA Best uh, Rural um, ISP Award. And we also got the Inca Best um, Rural uh, Community. Um, very proud of that. Very, very proud of that. Uh, we've been going since uh, 2011. I'll do a little bit of background on Barn uh, and who we are and what we're doing. Um, we work with our communities in the rural and deep rural spaces. And we are putting uh, full fiber gigabit connections in um, all the way up the hillside, okay? We reach everybody in the community. Uh, so great achievement um, from the team. Uh, I do have a clicker, so I can, uh, I can click now. Let's see if I can make this work. Here we go. So, okay, this, this is where the eyeballs are for access to all the content and everything else that's going on. What's the current situation? Okay, well, the government has said, all right, yeah, fine, gigabit capable's the way, capable is the way to go, okay? A few different ways of getting there. Full fiber, we support that, absolutely. Doxis 3.1, absolutely does the job. Um, and there's also a mix of technologies as well. But what have they committed to? All right, so 85% UK-wide gigabit capable coverage by 2025. Okay, all right. And then you say, all right, well, what's the current full fiber coverage, let's say, in England? 27% at the moment. And the total properties in England, 25 million. Okay, let's think about that. So wh where are we now? Almost into 2022. They want that by 2025. And they're also working outside in. Absolutely the way to go. So the hardest to reach first. Um, is that going to be possible? Okay. Um, difficult, shall we say. And at the moment, um, the alt-net space is booming, right? There's, there's a lot of alt-nets coming up, um, creating their business, building physical infrastructure. Uh, they're using the wholesale model, so then they can put the physical fiber in the ground, and they can ask the operators then to provide the service over the top. We're doing both, right? So we're putting physical infrastructure in the ground, and we're the ISP on the top of that as well. So challenging, right? So I'll talk about some of the things that are happening on the ground. So first of all, um, really, it's deciding what your baseline is. What, how are you going to deploy your network? OK, so choose a technology, stick with it. Um, you know, we've chosen full fiber. Um, and I've mentioned there, again, there's, there's mixed technologies, because people believe in the deep, deep rural. The only way is, I don't know, one web star, uh, Starlink or others to try and get there. But actually, for us, they've built a house there on the top of the hillside. So they've, they've managed to do that. What's a piece of seven mil duct going up the hillside to get there with a piece of fiber in it? Which it should be possible. So that's what we're doing, okay? Um, and we've done it before and we'll do it again. So, you know, we're, we're operating in the northwest of England predominantly at the moment. And some of the longest lines we have are, you know, six kilometers for one farm, okay? So that's six kilometers of digging in the ground, no overhead, get the fiber in the ground. Do it once, and you'll never have to go back to it again. So that's what we're doing. We believe it's possible, but it takes time. So you know, that's a challenge, a real, real challenge if we're going to meet the government's goals and try and work for the hardest to reach back. Um, it's, it's, it's tough. So what have you got to have in your tool set? OK, so most of you will be aware that OpenReach have opened up their duct systems physical infrastructure access. It's got to be part of your tool set. If you're building network, you've got to, be, you, you've got to use it, right? Um, and where we're using it, there's a little example, very hard to see, sorry, really small. At the bottom there, where you can see the M6 motorway, all right, and we want to cross it. So if you want to dig the bridge, all right, forget it, really. I mean, it's going to cost a lot. Uh, you're going to have to get all the permissions. And actually, BT have got infrastructure over there, and in the rural space, the duct's quite empty, really. Who are the operators there? Themselves. 
um, so we can go in it. So that little example is um, on the east side is very rural. On the west side, there's a primary school, and we want to go and connect the primary school. So we've hopped across the bridge, put a spur down into the primary school, cost effective, you know, got connectivity in there. So um, I, I think it's, you know, people are struggling uh, in cases to use it as their whole model for deployment because ducts are blocked. Um, it's natural over time. There's build that's early. There's build that's then um, you know very recent. So the recent stuff's very easy to get into. The older stuff's very hard. It could be silted. It could be blocked. It could be crushed. So you've got to use a mixture of your own build and using BTPIA or OpenReach PIA. Sorry. Okay. But just just be prepared that it's a big process to get access to it. Lots of documentation. Lots of systems. You'll need to dedicate some time to it. Okay, um, what else? Well, we have to talk funding, don't we? Um, but we also have to talk funding as a, as a challenge. So at the moment, there's, there's huge appetite in the altnet space, okay? Um, I, th I think I mentioned later on, that there's, I think there's about 80 plus altnets that are out there at the moment doing this thing. Um, and there's, there's uh, appetite from investors to go and back these um, and deliver network, okay? And it's, it's all around the gigabit capable, um, and, you know, I've mentioned again, outside in, absolutely the way to do it. Uh, but it's huge, huge pressures, okay? Um, and what you've really got to do is you've got to define what you're doing. Where are you going? What's your scope? Are you able to then deliver against the targets that you set? Um, you know, putting physical infrastructure in the ground is hard work. It's hard graft. Okay, um, so you've got to make sure that you're not overstretching. Um, you, you, you set a, a reasonable scope to achieve and then go and do it in a reasonable time scale. Time scale. And then uh, Project Gigabit. So a, lo a lot of you will know or have heard of Project Gigabit um, and also the Gigabit Voucher Scheme. Um, you know, this is the government's five billion that they're putting into uh, Gigabit infrastructure in the UK. Um, this is key, right? You've got to engage with it. So for us, it's the voucher schemes that work. Now this is, uh, the, you know, the vouchers are assigned to the very people you're going to connect. Okay, they're the beneficiaries of this. They get the money and they um, choose you as a supplier and you, off you go and build the network. Um, that, that absolutely works for our model and we can go to a community. We can look at um, you know, defining the scope of the community with them. It could be geographical boundaries. Um, it could be political boundaries, uh, whatever it might be. And uh, you know, we, we can see that there is a commitment from DCMS to really working with the altnets. It's been a tough time over the past few months, but actually we, we're really getting there in order to continue delivering um, because that's the only way we're all going to get there and produce you know, UK-wide gigabit-capable eyeballs for all the content to be thrown down. Okay? Um, and the other thing to mention is that we all share a common goal. You know, we're at the Inca conference last week. Uh, many operators are there. They're all saying the same thing. We all just want to be able to go and connect as many people as possible to gigabit capable services. Let's all work together, right? Let's not overbuild each other um, and fight over the cities and the towns. Let's try and make sure that we're all using the resource efficiently and get out there and, and, and connect everybody. <laughs> All right, Neil. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I could stand here and talk all day about the challenges, but I've picked a few. One of the biggies is permissions, right? So, if you're putting new infrastructure in the ground, that's new permissions that you need to gain from a variety of people. Now, I'm going to talk about the rural space, because in the towns and the cities, it's majority of roads and pavements, etc. But as soon as you go out into the countryside, you're going to have to talk to a huge amount of people. So you've got to make sure that you've, you've got your, um, you get yourself, so, yourself straight and um, you are compliant. You know, I've mentioned a couple of things here. Um, you know, CDM regs are key. Um, you know, projects are big enough. Um, and you know, with, with Ofcom as well and Code Powers, get all that sorted out, get yourselves ready to go. And then you need to um, talk to a lot, a lot of people. So I've mentioned a few names on there, but you know, a typical line could be 20 kilometers of, of dig for a rural route, um, and you may only pick up 100 odd properties on there, but you're going to have to cross a railway, you're going to have to cross a river, you're going to have to go up a hillside, you're going to have to cross, um, you know, 
protected land, you know, a uh, scientific triple SI or whatever it might be. Um, you know, those are the things that are out there and you've got to then gain permissions and, and, and get your network in there. Something we've chosen to do is, is really um, you dig it once uh, and put it all in the ground. You know, a lot of others try and use, um, you know, overhead or poles, BTs, PIA, again, with, with poles, et cetera, that may already exist there. But we feel, and it's just how we feel, is that you need to get that network in the ground, um, and then you can pretty much forget about it. And the beauty of fiber is that you can just change the ends, right? You know, you've, you've, you've spent the money, you've put your, I don't know, G657A1 fiber in the ground, um, and then all you need to do down the line is change the ends on it, and, uh, and hey presto, you've got the next available technology at your fingertips. Um, anyway, at the bottom there, put it in bold, but for us, we work um, with our uh, communities and landowners, and they actually waive the payment to keep the costs down, to make sure that we can uh, deploy together, um, including the community. You've got to talk to these people, okay? Um, it's the very people that you're connecting, and in the rural and deep rural space, which is where we operate, um, everybody talks to each other, and we're building the communities as we go through. So thanks to them. I'll always, I'll always plug a thanks in these. Um, moving on then. So on the technical side, um, we've heard a lot about um, you know 100, 100 gig, 400 gig, and even 800 gig. You know this is blowing my mind a little bit. Uh, we're planning 100 gig, 400 gig at the moment. That's our next technical leap. Um, you know we're, we're currently running on a network which is multiple 10 gigs everywhere. Um, you know lags all over the place. Fine, works for the moment, but we need to think about the capacity in the core network, um, and then what are you going to offer um, your consumers? At the moment, we can offer a 10 gigabit service to residential. Okay, there aren't many people really taking it up because they don't really need it yet, but it's there, um, and some people like to have it, do a speed test, and and brag about it, but at the end of the day, uh, it's you know consistent gigabit um, or single gigabit capability at the moment. But in the future, in the near future, um, it's going to change. So I've, I've put a little um, note there at the bottom that Ronan Kelly, um, Chief Technology Officer at Adtran, he, he spoke at a keynote uh, at Inca, and he was talking about, all right, well, what are people consuming at the moment? What are they going to consume in the future? Uh, and he thinks the world's going to be multi-gig, right? Because um, right now, you know, gaming is a big thing. You know, your Xbox might have um, 512 meg of memory on it. The latest game's 270 uh, gig or whatever it might be. So the consumer's going to go, how long is it going to take me to delete that and download a new one? If it's going to take me 10 minutes, I'll do it. If it's going to take me four hours, I'm not going to bother. So that's the way things are going. So in terms of, you know, thinking of the future and your technical um, abilities, I think you need to be thinking about it now. Uh, you know, so we're thinking at the moment, 100 gig, 400, well, 100 gig in and 400 gig capability um, in, in you know, recreating our core network. So in a few years' time, if, if the demand just goes through the roof, yeah, sure, okay, you can just deal with it. Um, so there we go. Um, I've been quite quick, probably, I think, but there you go. Um, so, in conclusion, really, um, there's, there's great momentum UK-wide at the moment. A lot of people doing this. Um, it's a lot of hard work and graft. Um, but, you know, it's a common goal. Everybody wants to do it. Um, there's a lot of work for everybody. And, and another thing, really, is that the... The industry choices for technology, that's all settling. Um, I think I skipped over a note about PON, you know, XGS PON, and all the different um, uh, offerings there for uh, access to gigabit services. It's, it's all settling. Um, so when you're choosing your technology, um, you know, you're, you're, you're sharing it between um, all the other operators. You know, this is not this, I don't see any way somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. It's not this new great thing that's gonna be coming down the line. It's, going to, it's still fiber, okay? Um, and that's the way we should all be working together. Um, there we go. And again, I've put at the bottom there, we, I always put a thanks to all our volunteers, champions, and landowners, because without them, we couldn't do it. 
Um, you know, I'm sure anybody would, would thank uh, anybody who's helping them get their deployment in the ground, out in, in the wide world. Because if we're ever going to do this by 2025, um, well, everybody should be digging right now through the night, um, 365. Um, so there we go. OK. I've rattled through that, haven't I, Jen? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Two questions. Hello, uh, Michael Daly. I'm, thanks for that. It's very interesting. My very first Lynx meeting some 10 years ago, I sat through a very similar presentation about this, and the problems seem to be identical. Have we spent 10 years doing this, and we still haven't got any better at it? Uh, that's a good one. Um, at the end of the day, I think, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, what, what, what is there to change? You know, I mean, it's a case of we all know how to deploy the network. It just takes time. There isn't this magical solution, I don't think, that's just going to come down the road and, and solve all our problems. People are trying at alternate technologies to deliver faster speeds in alternate ways, but fiber's got to be the way to do it, and it's just a, a long slog to get there. I think we've just got to keep going, more people doing it, upskill um, all the engineers that are out there, um, and, ju and just keep going. Can Neil? I just, can I build on that? So, and the community is really important, and you know, Barn have done a great job at, at engaging the community. This is where you can all help. I mean, genuinely, you're all say, hey, I'd love fibre to my house. Write to your MP, Council and say, hey, it'd be really good if you could make it easier for us to do permitting so we can close a road, so we can dig across a motorway, under a line. All of those things have not changed in 10 years. In fact, actually, when I started building fibre at Colt in 97, they haven't changed since then. And, and if you want fibre to happen quicker, you can all help. And I genuinely mean it. They are listening to these sort of noises more than ever. You know, they gave us some waffle about... Um, being able to use code powers in the mobile network just hasn't worked at all. Um, and, and if you want to really make this happen quicker, honestly engage with your local, local council and community because they have the power. Um, and, and it would make all of our jobs a lot easier if all of that permit and nonsense got out of the way. It's, it's an industry beyond belief. I, I agree, Neil. You know, we, we, you've got to run through all the motions to get the permissions to get on the ground, and that, that takes time, never mind the actual digging in the, in the first place. Anything else? Yeah, um, great presentation. Um, I did have one question. You mentioned about the physical aspects in terms of the street infrastructure. But one thing I was curious about is if you come across any way leave challenges, actually getting fiber into sort of shared dwellings, flats and things like that? Absolutely, yes. Um, way leaves are, are massive in, in getting permissions. Goes back to what Neil was saying in, in um, you know, being able to actually deploy. Yeah, housing associations, or it, 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 you know, at the moment, when you talk to land agents or anybody involved with, with gaining permissions, they don't fully understand, and this is with respect, they don't fully understand how the fiber networks are being deployed and, and the need to get it done fast. They, do, they don't see that. They're, they're stuck in the dark ages a little, and so you have to explain and educate and say, well, no, actually, this is what we would need to be doing. We need to get fiber across the front of these flats or whatever deployment model you choose to get them in come on, agree to this, we need to get going. A lot of these wait for us, you know, we go past and we connect property, we connect property, connect property. How are we doing with this block over here? Not connected yet, why? Permissions, okay, let's keep going, let's keep going, connect, connect, connect. Have we connected these guys yet? No, not yet, permissions. You know, and the fiber's dangling outside the front door. So yeah, it, real problems. Cheers, thanks Tom. Okay. Yeah, any other questions? No? Okay, thanks very much, Tom.